All right. Somebody say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Somebody say, Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I lack nothing good. It provides everything that I need. I can't hear you. All right, let's go back to John chapter 10, verse 1 to 11 this morning. I'll be reading from the Passion Translation, John chapter 10, verse 1 to 11. And the reason why I'm going straight to the word this morning is I need, I need to engage your attention span. And I'm trusting God that we're going to be able to land this jet well this morning. This is the last installment in this series. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So it's going to be a bit of a long read. I would have said if you read your Bible this morning, wave your hand at me. But let's not go there. Let's all just be in church and be good together. Amen. Amen. And look good. Right? So if you didn't read your Bible, it's under the blood. But Pastor D is going to make you read your Bible this morning. So the text is unusually long. Usually I would try to cut out some parts, you know, something. But I need us to have the holistic picture all right, so John chapter 10, verse 1 to 11, the Passion Translation. We read a part of it last week, right? I, I'm not sure the translation that I used, but today we're going to pull everything together. Are you ready? Are you ready? So you have it up the screen. So let's go. Amen. I'm going to be reading and then you go along with me. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Listen to this eternal truth. Somebody say, listen. listen. Somebody say, listen. listen. Say to your neighbor for me this morning. Say, listen. Listen, listen actively. Listen. Somebody is fighting. <laughs> you know, the things you see on stage, I go, <laughs> I wonder, like, better listen. Amen. Listen to this eternal truth. So it's not that it is relevant in certain seasons or relevant just here. It's relevant till eternity, right? The person who sneaks over the wall to enter the sheep pen rather than coming through the gate reveals himself as a thief coming to steal. I made up my mind I'm not going to preach this text this morning. And I'm going to listen to the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to keep reading. But I want to believe if you are listening, as I'm reading, things will be touching you. The Holy Spirit will be revealing things to you. Amen. The person who sneaks over the wall to enter into the sheep pen, rather than coming through the gate, reveals himself as a thief. Reveals himself as a thief. Coming to steal. But the true shepherd walks right up to the gate. And because the gatekeeper knows who he is, he opens the gate to let him in. So the shepherd does not sneak. The shepherd does not force himself on you. Are you in church this morning? The shepherd is allowed to shepherd. The shepherd is introduced. The shepherd... Um, I want to say, do you understand? So the shepherd is stronger, right? The shepherd can enforce, the shepherd can push, but that is not the way of the shepherd. When anything sneaks up on you, when anything enforces itself on you, that's the thief. That is the point where there should be revelation, but a lot of times we don't see it. We do not. Amen. So we have a bit sneaking on us. We have the culture holding us by fire, by force. We have peer pressure. Name it. Economic, different things. Somebody say thief. Somebody say only. Please give me different languages. Eh? Barao, Banza. If I don't only, it's not enough. Only, Ajibole. Amen. The next time social media is pressuring you, look at your phone like this and say, Ole, I need more languages. You know? That one is fire. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Please, Ibo. Oh, is it Oyoshi that is thief? Eh? Who else? Who else? Benue people. 
Kogi people. Eh? Oh, now. Look at and say, you will not steal my joy. You will not steal my identity. I'm the sheep of his pasture. I'm, he is my shepherd. Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. You see, I did not listen. You pulled my strings. I preached the text. But did you get it? Did you get it? It's still going to emphasize. And because the gatekeeper knows who the shepherd is, he opens the gate to let him in. How many gatekeepers do I have in the house? You are going to understand it. Let me not jump ahead of myself. And the sheep recognize the voice of the true shepherd. For he calls his own by name. Ah, somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. And leads them out. For they belong. Hey. Ah, for they belong to him. You belong to Jehovah. You are precious to him. A hey, hold on. You think you are the one holding on to God. You, okay. Where is your strength? Where is the hand? You belong to him. And when he has brought out all his sheep, he walks ahead of them. Ha! And they follow him. For they are familiar with his voice. Are you going with me? Are you going with Are we pulling it all together from week one, week two, week three? Amen. You are familiar with his voice. But they will run away from strangers and never, somebody say never, follow them because they know it's the voice of a stranger that is him emphasizing again you do not follow the voice of a thief you do not follow the voice of a stranger amen strangers at times are not human beings hallelujah jesus told the pharisees this parable even though they didn't understand a word of what he meant so you see that I'm not alone this morning. Some people are saying, what's Pastor D saying? Some people have gotten it, but some people are still wondering. So even though he said this, they didn't get it. Then verse 7. So Jesus went over it again. But this time around, we have a different illustration. And that's going to be our emphasis today. I speak to you, eternal truth. Somebody say, eternal truth. I am the gate for the flock. All those who broke in. All those who snuck in, all those who broke in, all those who enforced themselves, their priorities, are thieves. I don't care if it looks as if they are giving you money. I don't care if it looks as if you have some gratification from them. I don't care if it looks as if it looks as if they are doing you some good. They are what? Who came to steal? Ah! But now your hand, they hold me. Just that. But the sheep never listen to them. Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. Do you know, I've asked you the first week, who is your shepherd? I can't hear. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. So everybody can be following the fad. Everybody can get carried away that their source is from elsewhere. Everybody can rationalize the revelation of the word of God and the instruction of God. Not you, the sheep of his pasture. Not you. I am the gateway. To enter through me is to experience life, freedom, and satisfaction. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, destroy. Did you see that? A thief has only one thing. You will not say, Jesus, you are wrong. How can one thing now be to steal, slaughter, destroy? Jesus is telling you the thief. You are just focused on him stealing. He does not stop at stealing. He must destroy. Do you understand? Are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? Are you in church this morning? Are you ready to take off with me? Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. So when life comes at you, and it looks as if it's taking you down, and destroying things left, right, and center, your shepherd is saying to you this morning, it is normal. 
They are doing their work. They are sending their signals. They are trying to label you. They are trying to call you out. They are trying to bring out what is not in your identity. Don't recognize it. Don't follow the call. I called you my own. I am holding you. I have been sustaining you. I want to carry you. I have a future prepared for you that I want to lead you to. I want to walk in front of you. I know road. I don't only know road. I create the road. Do you understand? If you follow me, you cannot miss road. If you follow me, you cannot be wrong. If you follow me, you cannot be stuck. Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. But I have come to give you everything. Somebody say everything. So I want to believe that John 10, 10 makes more sense to you as it comes alive to you this morning. Can you see why it's a, it's a long read? But I'm like, we can finish reading and bust forth in tongues and start praying. And the power of God will come down here today. Because if you understand this, how you operate will change. I have come. I have given everything. I have laid down my life. I have established counsel. I have established things. Why have I established? I have come to give you everything in abundance. More than you expect. More than your calculation. More than your desires. More than your projections. More than your hard work. More than your pedigree. More than your connection. More than the trend. More than your certifications. More than anything. Somebody say anything. anything. You can ever expect. Life in its fullness. Until you overflow. When you overflow, you give to others. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd who lays down my life as sacrifice for the sheep. Father, I speak to our hearts this morning. You owed us. You called us. You created us. But most importantly, you sustain us. And in this season, you have decided to reintroduce yourself to us as your shepherd. Speak to our hearts this morning. Comfort us this morning. Heal us this morning. Teach us this morning. Show yourself strong. Do what only you can do. I step out of the way and ask you to take over. In the name of Jesus, let there be light. Let there be illumination. Let there be liberation this morning. And God's people say, amen. Can I hear a bigger amen this morning? Amen. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear a big amen this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you look at this text, you would see established in verse 11 that Jesus is what? The good shepherd. DJ, you're going to help me run through as I try to begin to... Verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. When you go for that, I think in verse 14, I think I read that last. He says, I alone. By the time he was emphasizing, is the good shepherd. I alone. There are other shepherds. But I am alone, the good shepherd. And I lay down my life. He says, every other do you the, the strangers, they are after their own returns. They are after their own gain. Do you understand? So when the wolf comes, when life, they will leave the sheep and run, but not the shepherd. Amen. And we know that, yes, God's love is unconditional. We've established that. We know that he loves you. We know that he, he, his, his own faithfulness is, is not in question. We are still doubting. The thing is, will you follow his lead? However, let me leave that. Establish, yes, we've always called Jesus the good shepherd. But in this same text, before he eventually said, I'm the good, so he was explaining how the shepherd operates, how the sheep operates. And remember, in that time, a lot of the Jews were shepherds. So Jesus was using that illustration to get across how the parallel, as in like that parallel, you know, whatever, of how the sheep is to the shepherd. 
it takes his time to establish that before he now introduces himself as the good shepherd. However, before he does that in verse 11, the first thing he said is, I'm the gate. I'm the gate. It looks as if we go through gates to get certain things. Gates what? Gives us access. Gates does what? Channels things. Gates does what? Protects. Pull in the gap. You understand? So a lot of times when we look at life, we look at only... Even if I say only salvation, what is salvation? The shalom of God, the goodness of God, the peace of God. And you know, Pasheko has emphasized again and again, it is the shalom of God when it is established that, that gives birth to true prosperity. Prosperity is not about money. Prosperity is not about processing um, physical things, material things. Uh, prosperity is true prosperity. Life in its fullness. Uh, life abundantly. Amen. So he says, it is only if you come through me, strike that, it is only if you follow me that you can have life, freedom, and satisfaction. However, there are other strange voices, other standards, and when we say strange, it does not mean it is wrong. It does not mean it is a sin. Most of the time, it's acceptable to sheep of other fold. But God is not their shepherd. God is your shepherd. His voice is what you are going to follow. And he says it is when you follow my lead that you are guaranteed to have life, have liberty, and experience abundance. But most important, satisfaction. You know when you are full, you don't have space. When you are full, you don't need more. There are times you are wanting more. But you should not need more. You should check and look at your life and be like, I have exceedingly, abundantly, far above what I can ever ask, think, or imagine. If that is not your testimony right now, if that is not your experience right now, check your lead. Check your following. Check your alignment. So if you look at this text, you will see Jesus call himself the good shepherd and yet is the gate. Have I established that? So I now decided that even though we have established that you are the sheep that follows the good shepherd. Are you? Or am I alone? I know the Lord is my shepherd though. If the Lord is your shepherd, let me hear you. Say it like you mean it. Look at that mountain before you right now and say, the Lord is your shepherd. Oh, my shepherd. Okay, I love you. You see, he has confessed that the Lord is my shepherd. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. So last week, I challenged you that the ultimate goal is who you become. So let's not focus on you being the sheep alone. Follow the shepherd in such a way that you become a man that people follow. And how do you become a man that people follow? You become a gatekeeper. So if you go back to the text, you will see that it is the gatekeeper that allows the shepherd comes in. The gatekeeper knows the shepherd. And I went straight to Jacob. Can you remember? And I established that, that in his last days, he called God his shepherd more than anything else. Yes, he has been my provider. Yes, he has fought for me. Yes, he has protected me. But I put this all together and see God more as my shepherd. So at that hand, he was praying and transferring wealth, transferring legacy to his grandsons while his sons were observing and he was introducing the shepherd into their lineage. And he was establishing that your fathers, Abraham and Isaac, it's not about their farming. It's not about their commerce. It's not about their trading. It's not about their relationships. It's about them walking habitually and following the shepherd. So, 
how exactly is wealth retained in this lineage, retained in our family? We follow the shepherd. Somebody said, the Lord is my 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 shepherd. So I'm challenging you in this season uh, that you follow his voice so much. First you recognize, uh, then you follow. Hallelujah. In such a way that you begin to introduce the shepherd and bring in other sheep. Because that's the ultimate. So that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate. So the Lord is your shepherd. And as long as he's your shepherd, You do not lack anything good. Do you want to take a moment to just look unto God this morning and cast every of your care, every of your struggle right now, every of your limits right now. Somebody is waiting for another moment for us to pray. Somebody is waiting on Pastor D to preach right now. But God came specially for you. He's your shepherd. I am not your shepherd. I am an under shepherd. The degree to which I can shepherd you is the degree to which God has empowered me. I know it looks as if you have everything under control. Can you come before me this morning and let him know if you don't hold me, I can't be held. I can't parent the children. I can't take this job to the next level. I can't take this business to the next level. I can't make the most of my career. Oh you have towards me are the plans of good and not of evil so bring me to the expected end that you have established for me ah Yahweh you are the good God you are the good shepherd I can trust you and trust trust is your currency of exchange so I acknowledge you as my shepherd this morning I lay down everybody I lay down every limitation I lay down every struggle in the name of Jesus I trust you my shepherd till I'm filled to overflowing till I'm a channel of your blessing till I'm a source of inspiration in this generation everywhere that I go I follow you in the name of Jesus so if he's your shepherd he's your healer when you need him to be your healer if he's your shepherd, is your comforter when you need him to be your comforter. If he's your shepherd, is your provider when you need, you need him to be your provider. Are you with me this morning? If he's your shepherd, is your trainer when you need him to be your trainer. It is not every time that the roads that the shepherd wants you to follow that you will like it. Amen. So for most of us, you see I said most of us. We follow him when his road align with our road. Ah, God, ah, you get sense. Yeah, ah, correct guy. But once he's looking like, mm -hmm, I didn't want. You say, shepherd. You say, yes. Day your day. I did your day. Can you look at your neighbor for me eyeball to eyeball this morning? Look at that person. Get ready. Look for a neighbor. If it's your husband or your wife, you are blessed. Look, look very intently. Are you ready to preach to them this morning? Are you ready? You just say, Pastor, why are you like this? See the comfort we have reserved. We have talked to God. You must feel tear shirt. Yes, I came ready for you this morning. Say, neighbor, stop missing your spots. Look for another one for me. Say, stop missing your spot. Go back to that for my neighbor. Say, stop missing your spot. You see, the beautiful thing is we stay in Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing good. The Lord is my shepherd. I am well provided for. Go to verse 2. It makes me. Who likes to be controlled here? Who likes to be told what to, let's call a spade a spade, not an agricultural implement? I don't like it. Some people like it. Me, I don't like it. Amen. 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 I was just speaking with a lady yesterday. 
You know, I think Pacheco was speaking with another married lady that was saying, I, I need my husband to be more driven. I need my, you know. Pacheco now said, Madam, calm down. You are a very strong personality, very driven. You know, I used to hear word. Amen. Tell me anytime that your husband has stood in your way to say, Lie, lie, you must not do this thing. Tell me once. She said, No. I said, she's not in our house. <laughs> she didn't do in our house. You know our house? Do you know our house? Do you know our daddy? You know my husband? You know him? Are you really, really sure? They don't used to make noise like that. Oh. They don't used to shout. But the fear of pitch eggs... He is the beginning of wisdom. At times, the look without talk will reset your head. And it's vice versa. My husband will tell me, when I hear some men do some things, I wonder who their wives are. Why did I say all that? There are times where we know the principle, we know the standard, you know who God is, you know he's your shepherd, you know he knows road, you know you are supposed to follow him, you feel like, you don't feel like, follow him. Being sheep in his pasture is not about feelings, it's not about convenience, it's not about certain seasons, it's not about certain conditions. You cannot be sheep today and be goats tomorrow. And you tell me you are in the fold. Who is your shepherd? It's not my own shepherd that is your shepherd though. Even though he will not deny you. You understand? He still remains the shepherd. But you have lost him as your shepherd. And I said last week, stay the path. The reason why you have not been able to stay the path is once it looks as if the path is not consistent with your desire, with your preferences, with your, remember, see how I messed up, your priorities. You shift and you miss your spots. And you see those spots that you are missing at the spots where you are established so much in the shepherd that you become a gateway of his blessing. Did you get me? Translations in that um, Psalm 23 will say, it lets me, it gives me, it causes me. Hallelujah. It, it begged me down. Do you understand? Some will say, it takes me to. Another will say, it offers me. The one I'm reading in a is NIV. It makes me lie down in green pastures. Uh, God said, I should tell you, at times uh, when I'm seeing green pastures, uh, you have not seen that type of green pasture before. Until I show you, you cannot recognize that green pasture. And you might think a pasture is going to stay green for the next six months. Uh, and I know that it's drying up by tomorrow. And I'm saying, carry your load, follow me. And you stay there and say, Alone, kilo day, your own is too much. I'm not going. You have missed your spot. It leads me beside quiet waters. It refreshes my soul. It guides me along the right path. Not because I'm all that. It is for his name's sake. He knows his plans towards you. He knows the specifics. I'm glad I'm married to Pishex. I'm glad. It cannot be pushed around. He would say, I didn't really. It's not good to be married to a CCO. You don't think as everybody's looking at us like this. If they say, ah, it's Pastor D that is controlled by, at least now you know. Is he online? You know some conversations are holding in our house. If they say it's Pastor D that just pushing Pashek around like this, Kolepe <laughs> Gboboa. Let me say English. You will not pay all of us. So at times, when I put my foot down, you, you know there are certain things. When it comes, I don't put my foot down because there are certain things. But they are saying, in my mind, I say, kill him, put, kill him, put foot down. You know, but there are times, even without speaking, I'm like, yeah, he's my shepherd. I shall not want. And I'm using picture at this point because I know you used to side him against me. All of you in this church, if you like, lie. Lie. You side Pashego against, I know. There's no need. If we do concerts, I know I will lose. 
I know somewhere in my mind, just know that hey, Pastor D is all right. But the degree to which Pastor D is all right is the degree to which she's still following Pastor Shegu. So let's be balancing like that. So I really understand. And if Pastor Shegu too thinks that he's all that, some people have warned him in this church that Pastor Shegu, ah, you will check well though, if you think you can stand against Pastor D. But the cocoa is, we're balancing each other. But I understand from following him, and at times it might not be a palatable. And at times he could miss it. That's Pashegu now. But my shepherd is always good. My shepherd is always kind. Most importantly, my shepherd is merciful. He does not lead me because I'm deserving. He does not lead me because of my experience. You, you are trying to distinguish pasture because of your experience. Ah, you are follow stranger voice. But, that is still easier. How about, I've now been following the shepherd. Praise your what's it what? Eh -eh. Amen. You say I should follow who no road? Abby? Why did the people that I love die on me? Why don't I have money right now? I know that I had witnessed my heart to marry this man of God, this man of God. Why is it the greatest problem in my life? Why am I walking all the principle? It didn't work. After all, Jacob died in Goshen Abbey. And when there was no light in Egypt, when there was, um, you know, whatever in Egypt, in Goshen, there was light. In Goshen, there was abundance. Why am I not feeling the comfort and the abundance of God in this Goshen that Pastor D has said that God will lead me to? Somebody say, why? I know you have been planning to ask God since. You better open your mother and Google ask. Let's ask him together. Say, why? Yeah. Say, why? Yeah. But I already established last week when we looked at verse 4 of Psalm 23. Even though his path takes me, even though at times I decide not to follow his path and I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it cannot be evil to me. It can be evil to other people that not his sheep, but not me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But verse 5 is where I'm going today. Tell your neighbor for me again. Don't miss. Stop missing your spot. It says you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. Hey, how many people came to first service this morning? How many people can say, when you honor, what happens? Oh, when you honor, what do you give? When you honor, what do you give? Ah, it's not just money. When you honor, what do you give? Feeling is substance. Substance can come as money. Substance can come as opportunity. Substance can come as promotion. Uh, did you come to church this morning? Uh, NLT says, uh, I know you are seeing it in a different way. It says, uh, my enemies uh, are not supposed to be present uh, where the shepherd has led me to, but they are present. Uh, however, I am not going to miss my spot. Uh, I'm not going to stop following my shepherd uh, because when I see the enemies all around, uh, when I see they attack all around uh, when I'm overwhelmed, uh, when it looks as if it's dark uh, all around me. That is when the Lord honors me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Hallelujah. Let's go back to our text. See what it says in verse 9. John chapter 10 verse 9. It says, I'm the gateway to enter through me is to experience life, freedom, and satisfaction. A thief has only one thing in mind. Don't get to certain tight spots and follow the thief. Don't rationalize away God's revelation. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. It will not only steal for you, from you. You are slaughtered, you are destroyed. But I have come. So many say, my shepherd has come to give me everything in abundance. Confess it like you mean it this morning. Ah, 
Ah, if you trust in God, some trust in horses, uh, some trust in chariots. Uh, we trust in the name of Jehovah, the Lord our God. Uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it uh, and they save. Uh, hallelujah. So I'm not saying I'm not going to see limits. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not going to struggle. However, as long as I'm following the shepherd, I'm led in abundance. Uh, I'm led to abundance. Uh, I'm led through abundance. Uh, and when I am done being led. I leave a trail of abundance behind me. My pathway it flows with milk and honey. I came to shift people to a new dimension in this series. Do you understand? You can never, somebody say never. Never be poor. Go possible. Do you understand? You know what came to my mind? Guess what? I will say it as, as I said, in my mind, it just came up. Strongly, I said, me <laughs> You know that kind of, even you, if your head wants to take it, me, I say no. I'm a gatekeeper. Do you understand me? And until I bless you beyond your expectation, beyond that your prayer point that you have written, that's 2024, that Pasheng will say you should plan. That's your exodus, that you are everything that you are playing like, be, until I bless you beyond it. And it's overflowing. And you become a source of generation, to a source of blessing to generation yet unborn. I'm not done with you yet. That's why I lay my life. That's why, so, but you will enter certain spots that is not comfortable. Stop missing it. Stop missing it. So I know certain things are not palatable right now. I know certain things are heartbreaking right now. I know there are certain things that you cannot explain right now. I'm your shepherd. I'm your shepherd. I make you lie down. As long as I make you, it is green pasture. You are the sheep of my pasture. You are my responsibility. I take care of you to details that you can never imagine. Somebody declare with me this morning, the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody declare with me this morning, the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody declare with me this morning, the Lord is my shepherd. And as a roundup, it is David. That's the second man that I choose to call to the stand. Last week it was Jacob. I remember the first week I said I was going to call David. Men that passed on transgenerational wealth, even though they were not deserving. They were far from perfect. They were flawed in every way. But yet, wealth, wellness, goodness, kindness, list it, it stayed in their heritage. To the point where they say, ah, it's me that you did this for, Jehovah. And they are the ones that called God their shepherd the most. Somebody declare with me this morning, the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody declare with me, the Lord is my shepherd. I need to leave that Psalm 23 verse 5 alone. Because I had other translations, but I need to run. So he chose David. Let me go to Psalm um, 78. Verse 70 to 72. Wow, my time is up. Then he chose David, a servant, and picked him. From his work in the sheep pen. He thought he was just walking in the sheep pen. He was following the shepherd. And as long as the tough spots, he did not miss them. He was being transformed. He was being prepared. So, even though in his home, he was no force to reckon with. They called the sons and they did not call him. When there is work that other people cannot do, that's the work it seems they left for David. Are you with me this morning? But he was following a man. He was following a God that the others did not know at that dimension. Then in due course, he chose him. One day, somebody say one day, he was caring for the hills and their lambs. Ah, but the next day, somebody say suddenly, <laughs> God had him shepherding Jacob. Can you see Jacob? His people, Israel, his prized possession. 
his good heart made him a good shepherd. God is saying to you, when you stop missing your spots, those are the spots that I, I transfer my character, my substance. So you, you are looking at substance, just the hand of God. He's talking about the anointing, ability resting on you, Multiplica ability to multiply wealth. Ability to deal with anybody. Ability to make everything bad into good. Filling the gap. It is that moment. Hallelujah. TPT says, the fragrance of the Holy Spirit comes upon me. Message translation says, he revives my drooping head. So when other people are saying there's a casting down, when you follow the shepherd, in those spots, they are your strongest moments. So your opponents think that they have had you where they need you. God is saying, you don't understand. The market seems not to favor you. God is saying, I'm your shepherd. The doctor's report seems to be overwhelming. God is saying, I'm your shepherd. Your boss thinks she can take you down. God is saying, God is saying, I'm your shepherd. You think there is no hope for your marriage. God is saying, I'm your shepherd. You think certain businesses are not flourishing at this time. God is saying, I'm your shepherd. You think that I cannot heal from this kind of depression, from this kind of heartbreak. God is saying, I'm your shepherd. Some other people take substitutes. So they take alcohol. But they'll be hungover. Amen. They take drugs. There'll be addiction. They'll be side what? What do they call it? Side effects, but the kind of comfort that I give, the kind of blessing that I give, it does you good. When you acknowledge me, I honor you with my anointing. When you carry my anointing, you be have the heart of a shepherd and a gatekeeper. I can trust you. So I will commit true prosperity to your hand. So I can bless the rest of the people through you. Did you get it? Did you get it this morning? Are you sure you got it? Hallelujah. He said his good heart made him a good shepherd. He guarded the people wisely. And well, somebody say, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm out of time. I don't know if I'll continue this somehow. In when? Is it December? But I believe I'm not going to go ahead. I'm not going to push because I'm not halfway my scripts. But I've gone ahead in my scripts to add some things. But did you get it this morning? Who is your shepherd? Where is he leading you? Ah, speak this morning. You know. Even if you don't want your neighbor to hear, speak. Where is he leading you? How is he? Ah, open your mouth and declare. How is he leading you? How is he leading you? You anoint me with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. I know I've not communicated everything. I can never communicate everything in my heart that God is speaking. But I know this is a unique season. I know that God is up to something. If you follow the shepherd, you will know road. If you follow the shepherd, you will hear beyond my notes. Then my notes is as a result of my own meditation. I have struggles to. I seemingly have limits to. But I don't focus on the enemies. I focus on the table that is prepared before you. I came to tell you that it seems that there are strangers all around. There are thieves all around. When they sneak up on you, tell them, go back. You are not my shepherd. I do not respect to you. I do not act according to your dictates. I follow my shepherd. I know who my shepherd is. I know who my shepherd is. And since he will not back down, since he will not let me down, 
Since he will not let go of me, he has not said otherwise. Until he says otherwise, I stay the path. And even when I cannot hold on again, he will hold me. Ah, he will hold me. Contrary to what they say about sheep, they say sheep, they are stupid, whatever, they are not intelligent. It's not true. I had to do a study. They are one of the most intelligent animals. Guess what? They have rectangular pupils. So they can see up to 270 to 320 degrees. You know, circle is 360. Do you understand? So when they are standing like this, they do not have to turn. They can see what is happening all around them, except at the back, directly at their back. That's the 40 degree at the back. But you know, when we feel sheep is stupid, when the sheep does not follow the shepherd that is guarding. But while they are grazing in the pasture that the sheep has led, that the shepherd has led them to, they can see. So, sir, I don't deny your intelligence. Sir, your bank balance is really very good. Sir, you can make this. Pastor, he did not give me my will last song so that I will not use my brain. You have sense. But if you follow only sense, sense will kill you. Because it's the fragrance of the spirit. I wrote it here. You cannot, let me read it. If it started in the spirit, you cannot finish up well in the flesh. Do you understand me? So the degree to which the sheep stay in, and then if you look at the sheep, their body is money. The fleece on their body. They are meat. Commerce. Do you understand? You are looking at things, substances. God is looking at you. God is saying, I've invested so much. You are the wealth. You carry wealth. So I have to hold you. I have to sustain you. The enemies will come in and fight. Don't look at them. Look at me, your shepherd. Look at me. The more you hold down your spot by looking down, the more I empower you, the more I anoint you, the more I lift you, the more I heal you, the more I elevate you, the more I raise you up till you become shepherd of shepherds. So do you want to lift your voice and lift your heart? This morning, submit your intelligence, submit your struggles, Submit everything and say, you see beyond me, Jehovah. I will follow your lead. So I will be more intelligent than my capacity. It says that the sheep, they can connect socially more than most animals. So what other people do affects them. What the other sheep are doing affects them. But as long as the shepherd is leading all of them, what is happening? They shall know want. Stop missing your spots. I know you're going through a test right now. And I know tests are going to come. I know it seems you know what you are doing. Or it looks as if you don't even know what you're doing. Or you are wondering, God, is this like this I'm going to be? But it's outstretched hands. So even though the sheep can see all around, I believe, according to studies, in the sight... As he looks around, he does not only look at the pasture. He does not only look out for the wolves. He must see the shepherd. He must see the shepherd. Once he sees the shepherd, all is well. Let me emphasize again. You cannot finish up well in the flesh. What started in the spirit? He created you. He knows you. The more you find yourself in those tough spots, he's anointing. It's honoring. It's overflowing. It's overflowing. But Pastor D, I cannot see it. Follow the shepherd. Pastor D, I can't hold on. Follow the shepherd. Ah! I'm going to give up. No! Follow the shepherd. As long as he's holding you, he's working everything out for your good. So I declare over you, in the name of Jesus, like never before, in this season, you will testify of the shepherd. He will be your healer. I cannot hear a big amen.
He will heal you even in places you don't know you need healing. He will be your provider. Your protector. Your covering. A thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand at your side. It will not come near you. Only with your ears and eyes you will see the reward of the wicked. It is not your portion. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout with me, the Lord is my shepherd. Shout with me, the Lord is my shepherd. I declare your shepherd goes ahead of you in your place of work. Goes ahead of you in your marriage. Goes ahead of you with your boss. Somebody shared a testimony with me a few weeks ago. Had a boss tormenting, I'm going to call as much as tormenting. Now, the person is beyond that boss with the promotion that he has. It was his tough spot. Amen. After getting, he cannot be proud. After getting this promotion, he cannot be proud. Some of us, we go through under people's hand. Then when we get to, we are more wicked than the people that made you go through. We have lost in two, side, two sides. But look at David. A man after God's own heart. That made the difference. He made mistakes. Look at Jacob. Made mistakes. By the end of the day, the hand of their shepherd did not only hold them. He held their establishment, held their household, and held their generation. See, we are speaking. Somebody lift your voice with me and say, now your hand, they hold me. Come on, let me hear you. So go forth and prosper. Go forth and win. Create wealth. Build it. You know what they call bastard wealth? Hey, do you hear me? As in, the kind of wealth that they cannot trace the source. That they can, all they can say is, this is good. This is God. This is great. But you see, it is men and women of substance that build wealth. But most importantly, the men and women held in God sustain it. So God is saying, I'm processing you so that you will not only build wealth, you will sustain prosperity. You will not only sustain prosperity, you will transfer wealth. Somebody say, I sign up. I wrote something at the end of my note. I said, promise me. Promise me that nothing will take you down. Nothing will make you give up. Nothing will make you say, ah, God. You see this place? It tells me that Ah, in a teacher. Me too, I think I know what I'm doing. Somebody say, never. Don't follow strange voices. Oh. It's not about sin. It's about not following the shepherd. Sir, if he looks as if he's dry, oasis in the middle of deserts is where your shepherd leads you. He's raining. His anointing. Focus on his anointing. Focus on his honor. Focus on his provision. Till it overflows. And then the enemies disappear. Promise me. So in your marriage, prosper. As a parent, prosper. Every land that you go, prosper. Everything that you do, prosper. Everything that you lay, lift your hands up. Everything. That you lay your hand upon. Prosper! Amen. It seems beyond you right now. It is not beyond your shepherd. Prosper! Amen. In the name of Jesus. You don't prosper alone. You prosper with your household. Amen. You prosper so much. Your children yet unborn. They enjoy the prosperity. Amen. People that you have not heard their name before. They will hear of your name and give praise because of you. Amen. Did you hear me? That's what I came to do. I can teach you about prosperity. I could have started in another, but you see, Joseph is my witness, right? Last minute, he said, tell them, the Lord, I, the Lord, am their shepherd. Amen.